Well, this was supposed to be a happier show because it's Christmas if you're listening on the day of this uh, episode's release. I'm Andrew Pang, and welcome to episode number nine of Spartan Nation Now. So, as you may guess, this was supposed to be a Christmas special. I was planning on a much happier show than what I'm about to present. I was planning on shooting video of the of the San Jose State football team riding the bus back to 7th and Alma with the Hawaii Bowl trophy in hand. But unfortunately, that was not to be because San Jose State lost 24-14 to to Coastal Carolina. Still, I'm going to have a lot more visual aids that I've been doing in past episodes, so please follow along on YouTube and make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this uh, episode, as painful as it's going to be. So this is going to be a much more somber show than I, than I was really uh, preparing f- for, and I really didn't want to do this, but I am going to stick to my word and record a show for Christmas, as I indicated I would do last week. So I'll have a recap of what happened in that game and thoughts about where the San Jose State football program goes from here. But, of course, this season, this is supposed to be a joyous season, so I've got to balance it out with some more positive news. Because I've got uh, got to recap the men's basketball win versus Santa Clara, and women's basketball also had a win before they went on an, a rather extended uh, week-plus break as well. So, before we get to basketball, let's get let's recap the football game, a rather disappointing one. Some of you have did travel to Hawaii to watch the Hawaii Bowl. Others, me and myself included, stayed home to watch on TV or went to the the official watch party hosted by Narrative Fermentations. That's a bar just a walking distance from SEFQ Stadium. I I did attend that uh, official watch party as well as like 30, 40, 50 or so fans. Uh, I'm not, of course, full disclosure, and I'm, I am not getting paid by narrative fermentations or any business to promote themselves. I'm just recounting my personal experience here. So, regardless, I'd like to extend special thanks to narrative fermentations as well as Smack Burgers for uh, catering food because narrative fermentations does normally does not serve food. And, of course, among the guests at the Narrative Fermentations official launch party for the Hawaii Bowl was none other than the man, the myth, the legend himself, Crazy George. Now, Crazy George did a good job keeping our spirits up for a game that was rather disappointing. As for the game itself, Brent Brennan has become the first ever San Jose State head coach with three bowl appearances. But none of those were wins. After the game, he emphasized that winning a bowl game was an area that he wanted to focus the team to focus on, and that was in response to a reporter's question how he felt about his past ties to the state of Hawaii, given that he used to be a graduate assistant a long time ago at the University of Hawaii, and his cousin Colt Brennan was a legendary quarterback for Hawaii. So here's the clip from the post-game press conference. For me, I'm not really worried about my connections. One time, we just wrestled in a game of Hawaii. I'm worried about what winning a bowl game means for our seniors and for our program. You know, we have something that we obviously haven't done since last year. For much of the night, it was an ugly, ugly game where San Jose State couldn't run the ball, couldn't get timely stops, couldn't make catches, committed dumb, costly penalties, such as. Uh, a holding penalties had wiped out uh, first downs or big runs. Or worst of all, there was a pass interference on a third and 23. And guess what happened on that drive where the third and 23 got turned into a free first down? Well, that was after um, a turnover where San Jose State had the second fumble of the night. Coastal Carolina would score a field go- a 49-yard field goal off that uh, turnover and the free third down and let 17 nothing. That was in the fourth quarter. And you read that and you heard that right. San Jose State went 3 quarters without scoring a single point. What happened? This was not what I was expecting 
out of a San Jose State football team that had won six in a row with their backs against the wall and a one and five record. That six win game win streak consistently had great, great offenses and shut down defenses. For all the hard work the team did to get to the, where they are, they just throw it away like that against a team that entered with a two game losing streak, including a 56 to 14 loss. And against a team that was missing their top wide receiver and a bunch of other guys to the transfer portal. Shevin Cordero played his final uh, game as a college football quarterback, passing 16 for 30 for 215 yards and one touchdown. It really hurt the team where the wide receivers didn't step up. Nick Nash, normally Mr. Reliable and normally the deep threat in the absence of the injured Justin Lockhart had just one catch for 24 yards. He was targeted four times. Charles Ross had three catches for 47 yards and he was targeted six times. Now San Jose State did lose, um, have a uh, two starters on offense missing due to transfers, uh, tight end Dominic Mazzotti and left tackle Malik Williams. To his credit, um, the offensive line with Williams gave up only one sack. But from what I saw watching the game on TV at Narrative Fermentations, Cordero was too often under pressure, as if it was bad enough that the run game was ineffective. So let's just say the Hawaii Bowl was not the finest moment for Williams in the offensive line. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll have to see how they do during spring and fall camp. As for running back Kyrie Robinson, his final college game was an ugly one for all the great stuff he had done on the run game during the six-game win streak. Kyrie Robinson fumbled the ball twice. Both times led directly to Coastal Carolina points. Ten points. Worst of all, there was one fumble that was, it was in the red zone. So that was a 14-point swing, a 10-point swing at least, in Coastal's favor. And that other fumble that Kyrie had was after a 20-yard run. So I actually went to the um, Coastal Carolina online roster to see what's, what was up with the two guys who forced those fumbles. So the first fumble by Kyrie in the red zone was forced by a linebacker named Teddy Teokeng. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm trying my best. I looked into his background. So it turns out that Teo Kang is a transfer to Coastal Carolina from Notre Dame College. No, 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 not the Fighting Irish, not the perennial uh, powerhouse uh, football team known for Rudy or George Gipp, but rather a school called Notre Dame College. That's a Division II school in South Euclid, Ohio, um, a few miles east of Cleveland. And who was the other player who forced a fumble from SJSU? A cornerback named Abraham T. Money III. He's also a, div a transfer from another Division II school. So it's bad enough that Brennan has not won a bowl game in three tries. It's bad enough that San Jose State did nothing on offense for three quarters. It's bad enough that the team looked nothing Nothing like the team that we saw pull off that six-game win streak that got them to this bowl game. But both turnovers were forced. Both of those turnovers that gifted Coastal Carolina 10, uh, 14 points, I should say. Sorry, 10, 10 points. Were forced by Division II transfers. I don't think those guys even have profiles on 24 seven or the usual recruiting sources. I mean, I remember the team getting blown out by ball state during the 2020 season. And then the way they just quit against uh, Eastern Michigan last year, but then having two tur costly turnovers against your great senior running back forced by some, 
obscure Division II transfers. Jeez, this makes this loss feel even worse than I originally thought. Now on defense, Coastal Carolina had their third string quarterback starting, Ethan Vasco. That was because first string quarterback Grayson McCall has been sitting out due to a concussion. And the second string quarterback, Jared Guest, had entered a transfer portal. Guest had originally been on uh, Coastal Carolina's depth chart as an or in the QB1 spot, but eventually Vasco got the start. And this is an Ethan Vasco, this Ethan Vasco quarterback, he's a redshirt freshman. He was the least experienced among the three quarterbacks that uh, Coastal has had to play this year. Because he has played only, this was only his eighth college game. And how did he play against the vaunted San Jose State Derek Odom defense? He passed 24-33 for 199 yards and three touchdowns. He also rushed for 50 yards on 17 carries. How does this happen where San Jose State ties for first in the Mountain West? But they can't stop a third-string quarterback who hasn't really played too many games. I sh- Let me correct myself. So he did play one game in 2022 as a freshman at Kansas. But this was his uh, eighth appearance with Coastal Carolina this year. And most of his appearances with uh, Coastal Carolina, his first four, I should say, were in garbage time. But then his last four, he's played significantly more. But to have his best performance of the year against San Jose, a San Jose State defense that was, had been previously shutting down opponents as good as Fresno State? What? This was a total collapse by the team. Something happened along the way between the regular season finale and the bowl game. I mean, the stars aligned perfectly nearly perfectly for San Jose State to win this game. Because unlike 2022, this year's six-game win streak had some truly complete wins, like the ones against Utah State and Fresno State. And during that win streak, San Jose State combined a high-powered offense with an aggressive, possession-stealing defense. Compare that to 2022, where San Jose State barely escaped against some bad Nevada and Colorado State teams and won, and beat a bad Hawaii team at home by only 13 points. I sensed the 2023 team in the second half played with a lot more passion, a lot more heart than the, the second half of 2022 or the first half of 2023 for the matter. Sad to say, the San Jose State team that showed up in the Hawaii Bowl regressed to the one and five, the one that we saw starting one and five. Basically, the same old San Jose State. Is this result disappointing? Yes. However, I wouldn't be doing you, the listeners, a good service if I were to just be a knee jerk critic. Nor should I do I do uh, volunteer public relations work for the school because they have highly paid professionals who do that work anyway. So here is a clip from Coach Brennan during the post game radio interview with the Spartan Sports Network, where he expressed optimism about the direction of the program. You know, I thought our defense was fantastic all night. I think they, you know, gave us a chance to be in it, you know, and that, and I just really, you know, I think Coach Odom and, and the whole defensive staff has done a good job evaluating, developing the players that are here. And I think, you know, we're going to continue to grow, you know, as, as a football program. Now, earlier I said that this was a disappointing result. It must also be asked, does Coach Brennan deserve to be criticized for this result? The answer is yes. To his credit, he is the first San Jose State coach with three bowl appearances, but he's 0-3 in those bowl games. And at some point, he's got to bring back a bowl trophy to San Jose. 
Otherwise, recruits are going to stop buying into what he's selling. It must also be asked, does Coach Brennan deserve to be defended? The answer is also yes. Look at the 2024 recruiting class that was signed on the Wednesday before the bowl game. Brennan recruited, uh, signed four quality transfers in positions of need, specifically wide receiver, running back, and safety. The two safeties who were signed are both rated three stars by 24-7 sports. They are Larry Turner Gooden out of Texas and Robert Rahimi out of Liberty. Among the bigger steals of this 2024 recruiting class was linebacker Jabari Mann, a Bay Area kid who had chosen San Jose State over offers from Oregon State and Pittsburgh. Jabari Mann had even had an official visit to Oregon State back in September. And in October, in the midst of San Jose State's 1-5 start, I wrote a commentary for Inside the Spartans called In Defense of Brennan. And some of what I wrote still applies today. I'll read some excerpts. Quote, When Brennan was hired in December 2016, he was taken on a fixer-upper of a football program that had just three winning seasons in the last 20. Much of that era had a severe lack of resources and funding. I went on to say, quote, Brennan has a combination of loyalty, integrity, and character seldom recognized in college sports. His leadership of a clean program stands out compared to recent scandals at bigger brand programs like LSU, Michigan State, and Northwestern. Adding the Beyond Sparta career development program, Brennan has enhanced the school's brand with an, ex- with an expectation that student-athletes should prepare for life after athletics. It would be unfair to Brennan, after all he has given and more, to scapegoat him for the booby traps and banana peels that past coaches and administrators left behind. Doing so conveys the wrong message that San Jose State will not give future applicants any chance to sustain success. And in my commentary, I also named two other group of five coaches, Craig Ball at Wyoming and Chris Creighton of Eastern Michigan, as examples of coaches who found ways to sustain success when given time to build programs. Craig Bowl, in fact, is retiring this year after 10 seasons leading Wyoming. And Chris Creighton just wrapped up his 10th season at Eastern Michigan with the sixth bowl appearance under his leadership. Now, on a side note regarding Eastern Michigan, not only did they get destroyed 59-10 to by South Alabama right before San Jose State's bowl game, but one of the Eastern Michigan players started a fight after the game. So as easy as as it is to complain about Brent Brennan being 0-3 in bowl games, let's keep in mind that Chris Creighton at Eastern Michigan was 0-4 in bowl games before that 2022 Potato Bowl win over San Jose State last year. Now, you know who you are if you're one of those detractors who didn't like Brennan and didn't want him from the first day. But as reported recently by Steve Berkowitz at U- for, uh, of USA Today, after the win versus San Diego State, Brennan's contract got automatically extended through the 2027 season. So ultimately, it'll be up to the athletics director Jeff Konya and President Cynthia Teniente Matson to determine the way forward. How can San Jose State be elevated? From a from barely just winning, uh, a, a, achieving winning seasons, you know, seven win, six win seasons, to the next level where they can consistently win eight, nine, ten wins, moving this move the ceiling up to eight, nine, ten wins, similar to the glory days of nineteen seventy three to nineteen ninety two. Will they force Brent Brennan to make changes to assistant coaches? Or the roster? I'm seeing that fans are scrutinizing of offensive coordinator Kevin McGiven once again. 
for the failure to do anything on offense for the first three quarters against Coastal Carolina. I've spoken with Athletics Director Jeff Coney some, uh, sometimes, uh, several times for Inside the Spartans, as you have uh, read or have listened to. Based on my observations of his actions at San Jose State and my conversations with him, I have the sense that he wants better for football and all teams at San Jose State. He does share that vision with many of you listeners, I'm sure. It'll be interesting to see what kind of feedback that donors are going to give to San Jose State administration, given the fact that Brennan has accomplished more than any has has done has had more sustained success, I should say, than any coach you can name at San Jose State since the nineties. Because back in October, I remember hearing from a good friend who has given a lot of money to San Jose State over the years that plenty of donors were un- dissatisfied with Brent Brennan. But now, as Steve Berkowitz reported, Brennan's here to stay, unless. Something drastic is drastic changes. He's locked in till 2027. So what happens here on out will depend on what Spartan uh, school administration decides to do. And shifting to some happier news, as I promised, about San Jose State basketball. San Jose State men's basketball is now 7-6 after a thrilling 81-78 win versus rival Santa Clara on Wednesday. Five Spartans scored in double figures, led by MJ Amy with 17 points, Alvaro Cardenas with 14 points, Tibet Gorner with 12 points, Latrell Davis also had 12 points, and finally Adrame Zhang had 10 points. Both teams shot exactly 50%, but San Jose State was the better ball-handling team with a 21-7 assist-turnover ratio. Santa Clara had twice as many turnovers and had a, had le, had a less efficient 18 to 14 assist turnover ratio. So here are some highlights as shown by NBC Sports Bay Area and the Mountain West Network. So Adrame Zhang, the transfer center out of Washington State, has really turned it on. He struggled earlier this season, but he had some dunks to fire up the crowd of over 2,000 people at this Provident Credit Union Event Center. Shot clock down under 10, and an alley-oop. How about that? Cardenas for Jean, who throws it down with authority. Cardenas for Jean. He may not make a lot of free throws, but he's sure high percentage at the rim. MJ Amy also got the job done beyond the arc, as shown by this three-pointer that got turned a one-point lead into four points. Cardenas for Zhang. He may not make a lot of free throws, but he's sure high percentage at the rim. And here are some of the comments by head coach Tim Miles in his postgame interview with NBC Sports Bay Area announcer Dave Benz. And and it got more of a grind in the second half. Uh, but defensively, for being an undermanned team, we, we had some mismatches and, and uh, we had some good fortune. And we... You know, when I thought they'd hurt us inside, but they got with the rebounding early, right? They got five offensive rebounds in the first six or seven minutes of the game, seven in the first half, and 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 they still made eight threes, right? And I'm like, you you can't give up both, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like can't can't get killed inside and let them make threes, and then they kept making threes, and we did a better job inside the second half, better job on the glass, and I'm happy for the kids because this means a lot when you walk around town, like you say, you want to have your chest high and your head high. And, um, and, you know, we've just had some bad fortune. We lost a couple games where we had the last defensive possession uh, with the lead and lost them both in overtime. We had some injuries. And um, so what a great way to go into Christmas. And believe it or not, Santa Clara head coach Herb Sendek now has a losing record against San Jose State. Santa Clara under Herb Sendek beat San Jose State in 2018, 2019, and 2021. But Sendex Broncos lost to San Jose State in 2016, 2017, 2022, and now this year. 
Nonetheless, Santa Clara is still a quality team as they've improved to 9-5 and five after an 81-73 comeback win versus a similarly good Duquesne team on Saturday. Santa Clara should be back into College Insider mid-major top 25 this weekend. So San Jose State men's basketball will have a is in a well-deserved week plus holiday break before starting Mountain West play on the first week of January. That's going to be a road game this Jan- on January 2nd at Wyoming. Tip time is 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 5.30 Pacific Time, streaming live for free on the Mountain West Network. And they return to the Walt, a.k.a. the Walt, which I and some fans call the Provident Credit Union Event Center after Walt McPherson Court. At home versus Boise State, it's got a 7.30 p.m. tip time with national TV on FS1. And both games are going to be on local radio on AM860 KTRB. Wyoming currently is 7-5. and five. Boise State is 8-4. Now, San Jose State was able to beat a good Santa Clara team, even uh, without forward Trey Anderson, who's been out with a knee injury. But Mountain West play is going to be harder, and San Jose State will need all the depth, all the support they can get. And I hope that Trey Anderson can come back better than ever. Now, turning to women's basketball, they're now 5-6 and six after a 70-53 win at Cal State Northridge on December 18th. And that's already significant improvement from last year, as head coach April Phillips is in her second season leading women's basketball at San Jose State. Last season, women's basketball was just 6-25. and 25. They had only two wins out of conference. For the women's basketball team, their non-conference finale will be on December 29th at a 6-7 and St. Mary's team. St. Mary's has a new head coach after their longtime head coach Paul Thomas was fired earlier this year. And then women's basketball at San Jose State will start Mountain West play on January 3rd versus Fresno State. That's got a tip time of 7 o'clock p.m. at the Providence Credit Union Event Center. Local TV is going to be on NBC Sports Bay Area. And the Mountain West Network will have a free live stream for those of you who don't have cable. Well, once again, I wish all of you listeners a very happy holidays and Merry Christmas for those who celebrate. I'm very grateful for the support that you all have provided for Inside the Spartans and now this new adventure of mine, Spartan Nation Now, this year. Thank you again for your support, and I I wish you all a very happy holiday break. Coming up on New Year's Day will be a special edition, 23 for 23, counting down to best 23 moments of the year 2023 in San Jose State Sports. Once again, this is Andrew Payne concluding the Christmas special edition of Spartan Nation Now. It's, it's It was unfortunately not as happy as I wanted it to be. But I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed the show, as painful as it might have been to learn about the way football wrapped up its season. Happy holidays and take care, everybody.